Hey everybody, we are here at the Fantasy Flight World's Championship Weekend. We are joined by Caleb and Matt and of course Stephen Woolley. Uh, and we are here to have a special treat for you. It's the unboxing of this beautiful adventure pack called the Morgul Veil. Super excited about it. This is coming up here pretty soon, but here it is. Incredible Sneaky. looking pack. Again. Yeah, I know. That, that orc means business. <laughs> it's serious. Um, look at him, he's blue. Uh, so anywho, this is the culmination of the entire cycle. There's some very uh, anticipated cards in here, but we're going to start it right off with our first card. It's the hero for this pack. I've never heard of this guy before. What's he about? <laughs> <laughs> so it's Theoden. Uh, he's a 2-3-2. Two, two. Uh, he has 12 uh, starting threat here, 4 hit points, Rohan, Noble, Warrior traded, Sentinel, Tactics of course, and then he reads each hero with a printed Tactics resource icon gets plus 1 willpower. That's an incredible hero. It is I mean, an there's hero. no way to look at it other than that's an incredible yeah, hero. Including himself. He's a Rohan. He's a noble. He's a warrior. A 3 3 2 for 12 with Sentinel. Four hit points. That's the leader that Rohan had been looking for. Uh, yeah. You it, know? But it's it's like it's the willpower hero that tactics have been for yeah. so long. Um, wow. I just I don't know what to say. The art is two, fantastic. 2 3 2. No two th less. Yeah, well, I mean, he makes himself a 3 3 2. And I like that he uh, he has a strong attack value, but he also has Sentinel. Yeah. Kind of wants to play that defensive game for his friends too. So you have to make some decisions with that, and, and that feels good. That, yeah, it's very cool. He has to make those decisions, right? That's that's the decision you make when you're <laughs> when you're riding around with a Rohan. He's king. He is king. <clears throat> yeah. This card's dripping with theme for me. The, the yeah. Sentinel really comes from that place. Like this is the Gondor cycle, and Theoden and Rohan have this relationship with Gondor, mm -hmm. showing up and helping out when they need. So he can defend for people when they need. The willpower boost for me was was important to his character. Like yeah. in the books, it always my one of my favorite parts. Like in the two towers, it's like you know the first time you meet him, he's this weak old man. Yeah. And then Gandalf comes in and revives him. Mm -hmm. And as soon as his soldiers like see him holding his sword again, they're all just like, "My king, like lead yeah. us." Uh -huh. Yeah. And I Come love it. In. And then yeah. again, like yeah. Gandalf's like, "You should take him to Helm's Deep." He says, "Okay." It's like, oh, well, you should hide out. He says, no, 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 I'm going. <laughs> and then all the soldiers are like, the king's riding with us. And yeah. they get pumped up. Like, every time they see the king in battle. So that's that's where, like, his ability came from. A place of, like, oh, Theoden's here? Yeah. Shoot, we're all getting plus willpower. Yeah, we're all, we're ready. <laughs> it's like, on. we're ready to go. He is absolutely amazing. What's what's great about his ability, too, is uh, obviously if you build him in a monosphere, a tactics deck, he's very strong. But also, it's not just the tactics characters that you control, mm -hmm. the heroes that you control. It's, it's the whole table. Excellent so point. Even if I'm not running a monosphere tactics deck, if I just happen to have you know, Laodin, Eowyn, and Dunehair, uh -huh. or something like that, and you guys have some tactics heroes, we're playing a four-player game, he's providing a huge willpower. Yeah, so that's even, incredible. Even the, even the Actually, constantly yeah. questing Thalin, it's like, incredible. Oh, well, he's always questing. He's never fighting, but the right. fact that he goes from a one willpower to a two, that's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Over the course that of the game, that is huge. awesome. Yep. Cool. Well, shoot, I mean, let's see uh, yeah, what, what we got next. Let's see, right, see him with Mary. Oh, I know. Oh, nice. Good Mary. call. I mean, that, yeah. that's a team right there. All right, so next up, Stephen. Uh, we got the Pelagir ship captain. Uh, two cost, one more power, one attack, uh, zero defense, two hit points. Uh, he's Gondor, and a uh, response after he enters play, move a resource from the resource pool of a hero you control to another hero's resource pool. Not another hero you control. Is another hero. That's fantastic. Following kind of the Pelagir Only theme. slightly less well known than Theoden. The ship captain <laughs> was huge the in the books. The hardworking ship captain. <laughs> That's he, right. He gets it done. That's. I mean, what more can you say? It's a leadership guy. This seems to be the the one of the things that these guys keep doing is moving some resources around, yeah. making making options available, enabling some dual tri sphere decks to to have the curves that they need. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you guys play multiplayer much, but when we do, oh, yeah. it's always like a fight over who gets Steward of Gondor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. So totally. it's totally. great to have like the ability to pass those around. Be like, I, I, oh, don't get mad. Hey guys, I'll, I play can, the, I'll share. I can share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Absolutely. Plus, unlike Aaron Ryder, the other resource-moving ally in this cycle, he's actually really good for his first cost. He is. He's got very good stats. Yeah. He's a good ally. Fantastic. I mean, he's a good ally to throw in front of something. <laughs> <laughs> but also, if you have if you have the leadership arm, there's a there's arm. He's too attacked. That's yeah. true. That's not shabby at all. Yeah, and, and the thing that I always... Those scrolls are deadly. Yeah, watch out. <laughs> uh, 
it's true. Uh, the thing that I always come back to with allies, we usually like the first like test for them if I think I'm going to play them or not, is do they have more than one hit point? Uh, and this one does, so I'll probably play it at some point or another. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. So. We, Here's we, a card that yeah, makes them good. We, we took a sneak peek uh, before we started filming here, and you guys were saying that this is like the card that more or less cements the theme of this cycle. Um, and I can't agree more. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, it's visionary leadership, two cost uh, leadership skill attached to a Gondor hero. While attached hero has at least one resource in his resource pool, Gondor characters get plus one willpower. That's absolutely incredible. So everyone on the table with the Gondor trade. Like, I don't, I don't know what, what, this changes so many things, I can't begin to get, think about it. But even like Stuart of Gondor that we mentioned just a moment ago, mm -hmm. that gives the Gondor trait. This will give that plus two resources right. every turn, now right. plus one willpower. The, the bonuses just keep stacking, and across the board we've already seen like so many really decent Gondor characters. Mm -hmm. And now with something like this, it's just going to put them over the hump. I want to see someone make like in a, in a two-player game. Someone go like leadership Gondor, and the uh -huh. other person go like the Rangers, like the uh, lore guy. Yeah. yeah, and just start working those guys. And then you know, uh, if you got room for a tactics player, bring in Boromir too. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Huge. Leadership and lore, because so often I think like you can kind of get away with playing this game with just tactics and spirit, because they kind of cover like the most fundamental elements of the game. But like playing leadership and lore would be absolutely beautiful. Yeah, what a card. I know. What a moment, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. leadership. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is from the Heirs of Numenor cycle. Good, good choice on the flavor text, too. Yeah. Keener amazing. Scythe and Lesser Men. Thank you, Denethor. <laughs> uh, let's move on to Spear of the Mark. One cost, item, weapon, attached to a Rohan character. It is restricted. Attached character gets plus one uh, attack, plus two instead of attacking an enemy in the staging area. Well, I love this. this I, is I've crazy. always, I've always loved uh, horse lord who kneels to attack uh, yeah. into the into the staging area. That's fantastic. Um, so he's he's monumentally good. I mean, look at this thing. I love this thing. Unbelievable. <laughs> the, the art's fantastic, and yeah, like uh, what's his name? Uh, is it Theodred? Uh, Dune here. Dune here. That, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Dune here. Yeah, Dune here. Yeah, it's, so, not, it's not good with just him. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. It's true. It's, we, this is absolutely. Yeah. I I, so is the is the idea of the Rohan like, is there a a flavor of them kind of going after the staging era? Is in like they are fast, they respond quickly, like they get out there before the threat comes to them. Is that kind of what's the thought here with the staging yeah, era attack? I think Nate did a really good job of developing the Rohan trait, like in the core box and the Mirkwood cycle, with uh, you know the spirit Rohan characters do a lot of really powerful questing and location control. Kind of represents their ability to travel at great speed. Yeah. And then with the attacking in the staging area was again sort of like Rohan doesn't wait for enemies to come to them. We ride out to yeah. meet them. Uh -huh. And uh, I think like the next card really represents that even better. To come well, the next this, card. You say. Uh, well, the, the, why, don't, why don't we take, <laughs> a, well, look, take a look at it? Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is one we were talking about. A two cost tactics event. Fourth Aerolingus. Uh, and it reads, combat action. Each Rohan hero can be declared as an attacker against enemies in the staging area of this phase. What more do you do there? <laughs> Not just you control it, too. I love yeah, this. Yeah. I love Rohan playing on the hero. synergy of the multiplayer format. Because they work together. I mean, it's across the board. It's a cross-player control. It's absolutely exquisite. The art, again, unbelievable. So I mean, at this point, are you? I mean, you can get a bunch of Rohan players around a table. Maybe a couple Gondor players, a couple Rohan players, and like. Yeah. Go to town. I don't know if you guys remember, there was that uh, that zero cost event in the Heirs Numenor box yep. that <laughs> allows you to share traits. Each Rohan character right. gets the Gondor trait. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. The Rohan. That's a powerful. So now theory. you've got visionary leadership, Brains boosting hurting. all of your guys, what? and then all of your Rohan and Gondor characters can attack into the stage here. So Boromir can just have a heyday. That is massive. Why would you not want Boromir to have a heyday? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea. This is excellent. And more Thayad inputs. Excellent. Next up. More horses, man. Horses. Love it. Love it. Seat of the mark. One cost. Mount. Attached to a Gondor or Rohan hero. See? We already got a Gondor or Rohan go. yeah. going on. <laughs> Uh, after attached hero convinced to a quest, spin a resource from that resource pool to ready attached hero. Well, yeah. Why wouldn't you? Why would you not? <laughs> Why would you not do that? Oh, Basically, for one cost spirit, you can give any Gondor or Rohan hero Aragorn's ability. That's awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's so flavorful. I mean, it feels like that's kind of simulating, you know, the advantage of having a steed, right? Yeah, I mean, I could be everywhere. I can quest <laughs> and I can fight. I can be in two places at once. Yeah. So I think nailed it there, right? 
man, yeah. Uh, what, what do you guys think about this? I mean, is this is this a replacement to something like uh, what is it called? Unexpected courage. How how is this like comparable, superior? You know, where does it do things that it can? Well, I think the main difference between this and unexpected courage is the mount trait. Yeah. And uh, I think we've uh, we've announced the voice of Isengard. Yeah. We've announced that there will be new Rohan cards, uh -huh. and <laughs> the mount trait might become more important. Watch us. out! <laughs> Watch out! I wonder, is that more important That's because it's like the encounter deck reveals, like, discard all mounts? Like, <laughs> horse slaughter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, horse thief. Is that well, going to be like say an it encounter deck? Right. Right. It's yeah, going to be a horse important. thief card. Right, right. When Voice of Isaac card yeah. comes out, everyone's like, Caleb's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate That's that guy. That's going to be more important. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I built my horse deck and then it sucked. Also, the other cool thing with this is, you know, you might not use it to replace unexpected cards. Courage, but that doesn't mean you can't use yeah. both at the yeah. same time. It's true. You can have three copies of that and three copies of this, and now you're ready. All over if you've got a horse and unexpected courage, I mean, the world is yours. <laughs> yeah, <so. man. laughs> I can do all three things if I want to. I want to make a horse that we can attach unexpected <laughs> courage to. That's right. That was a brave horse. <laughs> you go build a pony. Then it actually is unexpected. <laughs> it would be unexpected, yeah. wouldn't yeah. it? We, we've unexpected had, we've courage. We've had a couple of complaints that build a pony wasn't a hero card. A hero card. <laughs> so can, can you guys explain that to us? <laughs> So. I think I think I missed an opportunity <laughs> yeah, there. That's right. He's a hero. Turns out there's like about? conspiracy theories. Like Bill's really the hero of the whole novel. Yeah, the right. whole thing was Bill. Yeah. I wrote a 20 page thesis about that. Yeah. <laughs> Got me an A in my English class. Um, um, you want to take the lay? Yeah. Okay. So this is a uh, lay of Nimrodel. Uh, one cost spirit song event. Action! Choose a spirit hero until the end of the phase. That hero gets plus one willpower for each resource in its resource pool. That's I great. love it. That's great, because there have been plenty of times, Steven usually plays spirit decks, and he'll have these spirit heroes sitting there, and they have resources on them that Sometimes he's just... they're just hanging. He's just ready to play when he needs to, but otherwise, a card like this just puts those to use. It's yeah. like, oh, have you been saving? Well, good for you. <laughs> it's like, I'm ready to cancel some stuff if it comes out. I'm ready to play out, you know. Have and some it's willpower. it's like, well, hey, I'll take six willpower. And, and this will mean a lot to a lot of people. It's a song. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. I get excited when we make what cards it? with the song uh, trade. Was it Song of Arendelle or something like that? That you get to draw a card whenever you play another song out? Uh, I think that song one just replaces itself. It just replaces, it just replaces itself. Yeah. itself. Okay. Yeah. There's uh, Love, of, Love Tales. of Tales. That's, That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 I yeah. love this Tale. Yeah. I mean, look at this art. Who wouldn't love that? Yeah. Uh, is that another Magali piece? It is. Do we know who is this supposed to be? Do you guys... Are you... I think it's the girl from the song. It's sort of a... Oh, I see. Snapshot it's a representation time, of her yeah. via the flavor oh, yeah. text. Okay. A little, a little bit remember. more abstract in, in terms of, uh, I think, a shining Le star by Legolas. Day. I think Legolas sang this song in the books. Her mantle right. white was yeah. him yeah. with gold. Yeah. And then Nimrodel was named after this girl who, she got lost apparently. Yeah, <laughs> that's beautiful. <laughs> that's Made her excellent. way down to the sea. Yeah. Beautiful art, beautiful card. So excited for that. I'm gonna give you this one as well because I don't want to pronounce it. Oh god. Okay, so I'm gonna. <laughs> I try know you have like a dictionary, oh. Lord of the Rings. It's a good thing we're not recording this because uh, okay. if you screw it up, everyone will hear about it. <laughs> I got I got on a tin before. Uh, so this is gonna be uh, Ered uh, Nimreas, uh, I think. That's prospector. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Uh, it's actually Prospector. <laughs> Pro <laughs> prospector. You were so close. No. <laughs> Wrong. Uh, so he's a two cost, one willpower, uh, no attack, he's one blocky, two hit pointy, uh, ally, and then he reads response after <laughs> this guy with the unpronounceable name enters play, discard the top three cards of your deck, then choose and shuffle one card from your discard pile back into your deck. I'm still stuck on the one blocky, two hit pointy, I'm like, dude, is he a, does he have the dwarfy? <laughs> he, is, he is a dwarfy, uh, with a bookie. Um, important to know, he is a dwarf. He is a so dwarf. So it's good to see the occasional dwarf come in where it's like, my dwarf deck's still viable. You know, I'm, I'm still adding things to this template, and that's cool. <laughs> Look at this, I found rocks. Two, um, <laughs> one, one, two. I think he's a... This is, this is another combo card where we haven't seen the other half of the combo just yet. <laughs> I mean, but yeah. I... Just, just wait, Everyone's I, scratching okay. their head like, um, but, but this is still, what to do with that? This is still nonetheless kind of interesting in and of itself because you're more or less spooning off you know, three cards from your deck, and then you get to choose and shuffle one of those back in. It, well, it doesn't be, have to be one of those three. Anyway, yeah, I think that's the real value. Yeah. Is it, yeah. it, 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 it could be, but yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be. I, I've, I've had games where I had like 
all three copies of Gandalf in my hand, and then my hand got destroyed. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, so I mean, I could see playing him be like, Gandalf, get back in the. <laughs> yeah, get hey. back in there. Give me a shot. Hey. Come back in here. So the dwarves seem to be uh, really moving towards, at least in, in the lore and spirit side, uh, moving towards really manipulating that player deck mm -hmm. and kind of mining through it, right? Exactly. Digging, digging through it and kind of making yeah. things come from the discard pile and yeah. making things happen. You nailed it. You absolutely nailed it. And so dwarfy, man. You're going you're gonna to see that with the, the last card in this pack. Which is it, very thematic for like what they're doing. I mean, yeah. they're miners, craftsmen. This is like proper this. dress for a dwarf also. Yeah. This man. isn't foolish. This isn't comedy. This is a real dwarf <laughs> with a real life. He, he's got, he's down to serious business and he's obviously quite successful at it. <laughs> That's obviously. awesome. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Well, let's go to the Scroll of Isildur. Oh, uh, man. Four cost record. Attached to lore here. Uh, Reduce the cost to play so it by one for each hero with the printed lore uh, icon. So, really, in your deck, it's probably going to be a one cost if you're doing it right. Yeah. Uh, discard it from play. <coughs> uh, sorry, discard it to play any lore event card in your discard pile. Is it in your hand? Then place that event on the bottom of your deck. That is what I'm talking about. This, the cycle. This, this, this is the card that I've been waiting for for lore, essentially. Because right. yeah, you like to play lore. I love lore awesome. so much, but it's like we've seen this version, uh, the version of this card for every other sphere thus yeah. far. Lore is finally getting theirs. And Wouldn't that be hilarious if we didn't do it? <laughs> Everyone's waiting for that lore last pack. Get When's lore gets Sorry. Up? Where is it? Sorry. <laughs> and I mean, it counter deck control, and that's again what lore is all about—like knowledge, right? Know, kind of knowing what to expect, that kind of stuff. Just. This I just I awesome. just want to play uh, Mithrandir's advice for a fourth time. I know, right? I know. It's such a good <laughs> card. You pay one for that. Yeah. That's crazy. So good. Well, you can recycle card draw. You can recycle and, all those control and, and, effects. And bravo to you guys for making it the scroll of Isildur there. Uh, I, I couldn't have been any more appropriate for what we're looking for here. That's great. All right. And then there's one more to go. It's the zero cost hidden cash or cache. Not right. Um, I'll mispronounce that one. It's an event. Response. After a hidden cache uh, is discarded from your deck, add two resources from the resource pool. Uh, of a, ah. Oh, uh, add two resources to the resource pool to hero control. Action spin one resource to draw a card. So many spheres. This is Other what you than more are is going right. to be so grateful for this. This is right. I mean, more is obvious use with a dwarf. You discard it, you yeah. get two yeah. resources. Yeah. Or just spend a resource to draw a card. I think, I think these go three in a lot of decks. Man, that's good. Yeah, the secondary ability is really just there so if you draw in your hand, you're not going, well, I totally missed on that. Yeah. And at least you will replace itself. Yeah. But the, the best is, of course, if you can get on top of your deck. Find you can a way start to mining it. around. That man. is so yeah. fantastic. But yeah, that, that prospector. Or prospector. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> and all, and all the other doors. What's the uh, Neil two to search the top five, top three, or something? Uh, There's uh, the Imladra Stargazer that will allow you to looks. reorder the top five of your deck, yeah. or actually any player's deck. Yeah. Man, right, what is that card? It's and then like there's the uh, the Zigil Miner uh -huh. yeah, that will let you one. discard. Discard top, top two. Top two. Expert Treasure Hunter will discard the top. Five. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this starts draw. this starts to get really cool for the dwarves. The, yeah. These are serious combos. I mean, you found a hidden yeah. cache when you're fighting. Yeah. It's Holy awesome. Smokes. Of course. I like nice. those moments. I like those moments in a game where, you know, Zigil Miner, you have a chance of just doing its own thing, but then you, you like, double down, and you're like, woo! -hoo! You struck gold, <laughs> you know? You <laughs> found it. It feels so good, oh, so okay. mighty. Okay, so what, what are the cards that players, and we've kind of touched on some of these already, the players that should like pay attention to now and look back to what we've already seen uh, in the past packs that have released to like bring these cards back together and find renewed synergy. Uh, and what are also the ones that we should pay attention to into the future, probably in the next cycle or so? Well, I think the obvious one is visionary leadership. Yep. Just right away it ties in the, the whole Gondor trade. Mm -hmm. Everybody's getting that bonus. And, uh, and then again with the Rohan and the ability to link those two up, okay. just do crazy yeah. things with that. Uh, in some ways, I feel like the tactics cards in here are almost like a sneak peek into uh, a little bit of what's coming uh -oh. next. Uh -oh. <laughs> Watch out, they're going to be stealing our horses. Um, <laughs> that, that said, we aren't going to cover any of the, uh, the encounter deck or the quest cards themselves, but uh, what should we expect thematically, mechanically? Are there any like cool new mechanics? Well, yeah, I asked, you, I asked you not to spoil the yeah. cards because there's, there's, yeah, there's some yeah. great surprises in there. Yeah, we want to be surprised. Uh, I think the, the one thing that I, I think I can say is that so going all the way back to uh, the Heirs of Numenor box and the vision for the box into the cycle was to really push the story. Yeah. Just to really say, hey, we've, we've, been, we've been telling these great stories. Let's take it up a notch and uh, make the intro a little longer. 
and now we're writing a, like an epilogue for each adventure that leads you into the next one and it just ties them all together real tight and uh, there's 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 an exciting ending conclusion to oh, this one what? but it's just like it's just like if I was going to see a movie and you told me how it ended I'd be ticked so I was like no don't do it yeah let's like, not oh, do it no, uh, I, I think worth mentioning. Uh, I didn't look at either of them, but there are two inserts yep. in this pack, not yep. just one. Yep. So I think that that is like a huge play to what you guys were talking about, which has been an awesome part part of this cycle. It's been, and I, I feel like it's worth saying. I feel like it's worth saying in in this opening is that. Uh, so yeah, there's there's two inserts because the story couldn't fit on just one, <laughs> and uh, awesome. and it's because there was just there was so much story to tell. Yeah, and that's I, great. I, and, you know, I was actually just like a little like, I'm not sure how fans are going to take it at uh -huh. first, but the reaction has been so overwhelmingly positive. People have really been just either either posting on our forums or emailing me or Matt directly to say, great job with the story. It really makes me care about what I'm doing and it makes it more fun to play. And I think it's just worth saying like, that was actually Christian Peterson's idea. That's fantastic. Like he, he was, he's such a supporter of the game and, and such a fan of Tolkien that he was like, we need to take this story and do more with it. So he wrote it himself. Wow. That's so great. when you get this, and it's like, I, I feel he did a great job. I'm really excited for what he did, and uh, that's fantastic. I think people are going to love the ending. I think well, when they, well, when they finally get through it. Away. Yeah. When, when you guys have completed the Morgul Vale, finally finished it, uh -huh. completed, beat everything, go back and read, and read all of them. All of them. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Done. <Cool>. Will <laughs> challenge accepted. And this is something that we're going to be pushing from now on. This is awesome. Going to be the way it is. I can't wait for that. Well, better yet, you could probably like nightmare through the entire cycle, reading each one as you go. <laughs> it's like it's this continuous chain of quests and awesomeness. Woo! All right, fantastic. Well, there you have it, folks. This is at least the player cards for the Morgul Vale. We've got an exciting adventure waiting for us, and then up a conclusion to a, probably the best cycle. Well, not probably, definitely the best cycle we've seen today for this game. Until yeah. the next one. Yeah, until, until the next one. one. Yeah, that time. looks that looks so good. And, and thank you guys for joining us. It's yeah, always yeah, a pleasure to have you. Yeah. Appreciate it. And great job on the game, man. Yeah, man. So uh, awesome. yeah, great. Get the Mortal Veil. Finish the cycle. <laughs> Make it a thing. Read it's the worth story. Your time. Play mean, Lord of the Rings. It's it's the best of the LCDs. <laughs> uh, personal opinion. Thank you. Personal yes. opinion. Appreciate it. All right, guys. And we'll have more from Worlds coming up. Uh, who knows? Hour, two hours, five hours. Five seconds. Who knows? <laughs> uh, so stick with us, and we'll have more from Fantasy Flight at this amazing uh, little convention that we're at. Uh, stay tuned. See you guys.